Why the negativity with the football writers with Paul Tagliabue? That he put his head in the sand over steroids. I mean, not steroids, over uh, head injuries. Oh. That's why writers don't like him. There's a line in the book, um, League of Denial. Okay, but how many of those media members cared? I mean, we can now look back and say, where was the NFL on this? I mean, the players didn't care, the league didn't care, and fans didn't care. And the media didn't care. Right? I don't think the media knew. I mean, I don't think anyone knew the extent of it. I still don't think people understand. Well, what did he know, and when did he know it? I'd be curious about that. Yeah, Seaton. But there's sort of like, there's th- things that are right in front of your face that are so obvious that then once it's said, like, you know, boxers, right? I mean, we, we all know that that's like head trauma and stuff. Yeah. It's not like you can say that watching NFL players age and all that stuff happening. I mean, it was sort of right there, but was it just too obvious? I, I just remember watching as a fan and, and it didn't dawn on me of what kind of head but, but, you know, they played the game differently. They actually tackled better. The form tackling was better back then. If you go back, how many head-on collisions did you have back then? How many times did you use your helmet back then in the 60s and 70s? You know, the, one of the first times I ever saw something like that was Jack Tatum. You know, Jack Tatum hit Daryl Stingley. And it was so shocking. That was a preseason game. You just didn't see players lead with their helmet. They hit you, but it felt like they hit you, and there was a there was a competition, obviously, but there was a respect among offenses and defenses. Now, you can watch Dick Butkus, you know, clothesline somebody or drive somebody into the ground. Yes, you have outliers in there in the way they play the game, or Ray Nitschke. But, you know, for the most part, it felt like they did more. They were taught to form tackle. The reason why you have players who lead with their body is defensive backs made the highlights. I truly believe just getting into the highlights. Because if you didn't you know, come up with an interception, you probably weren't making the highlights unless you were beat for a touchdown. These defensive players realized, if I, if I blow somebody up, I'm going to make the highlights. I can make a name for myself. And I, I think that's where we got off the rails with the NFL. Now, I know that there's been head trauma and, and probably players that you don't even know existed who had head trauma. Those who are still suffering from it. And even the helmet itself, uh, you know, trying to improve. Upon, look at an old helmet. And I'm not talking about the ones that didn't, you know, have the face mask on it. But I'm sure Brett Favre's helmet you know, that Riddell helmet it doesn't look too impressive if you put it on. You go, boy, he went into battle all of those years with that? And I think that that... But I don't know Paul Tagliabue's legacy or have a strong opinion one way or another. Yeah, McLovin. Well, there's one damning quote in the book, League of Denial, where Tagliabue said that this is a media creation and it's packed journalism on concussions. Okay. And it, got, and it was a direct quote from me. I mean, that that's damning. It okay. was 94. Okay. Yeah, if... If they had the research and then he yeah. said that. But, and- also, but you have a bigger issue. Like, what do Goodell and Tagliabue really do for the game? Are they, are they, do they get the credit for growing the game or did the game grow around them? It's hard to tell, I think. Well, I wouldn't put in a commissioner like Paul Tagliabue or even Roger Goodell just because you made the owners money. Did you make the game better? I, I, like, what, what did you do? You were overseeing a league. Okay. Now everybody's a billionaire. Okay. You've increased the value. Okay. But he's also had mistakes as the commissioner. Like, I don't know what the checks and balances are with putting a commissioner in. I thought Pete Rozelle was a brilliant marketing man as as the uh, commissioner of the NFL. And I thought David Stern was a brilliant marketing man as the head of the NBA. But other than that, I, you know, if I'm taking inventory with commissioners, I'm like, okay, he was, he was good. Like Ford Frick. I don't know. Larry O'Brien. I don't know. Yeah, Paul. How, how would Commissioner Bowie Kuhn. How would Commissioner Tagliabue's responsibility to be the players? Isn't that the players' union chief? The health of the players and the safety and the longevity, not the commissioner. Commissioner's job is the opposite. His job is to make money for the teams, make money for the networks, and grow the game for the fans. But if you have that quote, though, then that feels like you're suppressing evidence there. That, that would be the only thing that I would say. You're right. His job is to take care of the owners 
and make money and grow the grow the sport. The Players Association, Gene Upshaw at the time, you know, what did he know and what could he do about it? But when you say, hey, this is a media cre- creation, it's like steroids. And we finally found out about steroids, and then we investigated steroids, and then we were told only 5%. Remember the, the famous Donald Fear line who headed up the Players Association? 5% are dirty. And all those years we tried to get him on because I wanted to say, then why don't the 95% be upset with the 5%? Because now everybody is guilty. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.